Sup Loop community, my name's Edge. I'm a Logic Pro certified trainer. And in this session, we're gonna start using audio to create transitions between sections of songs. So let's get started. So at this point, we have added a bunch of sounds into our project. We've started building up an intro, and now we just kind of need to start moving from one section of the song to the next. And so to do this, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna grab an Apple loop directly from the loops library. Logic comes with a bunch of really fantastic Apple loops that you don't have to pay for, they just come with Logic. And so to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the little loop button up here at the top right hand corner. Now, when you hit that button, if you don't see all of these, chances are you need to download all of the extra content. And to do that, we're gonna go up to where it says Logic Pro. We're gonna to go to where it says Sound Library, and you'll say download all available sounds. You can also open the Sound Library Manager if you wanna pick and choose which sounds you actually want to get on your computer. So you might as well do it. I mean, it comes with Logic and it's a really great value and it's also a lot of really great sounds that you can start using whenever you need. Now, what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to create a nice transition from the intro to a verse. And one of my favorite things are just those big drops, those big bass drops. Um, and in Logic, they're called booms, at least in the sound library. You can download a bunch of other ones online, but in my case, if I just type in boom, you'll hear that I'll get a bunch of different types that we can work with. I'm gonna do subsonic boom effects number four, and I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it in right at that last bar. Great. And um, the other thing that I'll do is I'll also put a little compressor on it. Again, compressor's your best friend. It's really something you can use uh, pretty much any time that you need to really liven up the sound of any sound that you're working with. And the reason that I'm using this compressor, by the way, is I can kind of already tell right here in the waveforms that it's not a very loud waveform. It doesn't necessarily need to, but I'm definitely gonna wanna make it stand out above the rest of the mix. Uh, in fact, if I turn it off, since I'm already in pre-fader metering, let's see what it sounds like when we play this. All right, cool. If we go ahead and turn the compressor on and play it back. Great, you can see that it kind of gets us that, just that extra push. And you can even see it in the meters uh, right over here. Now, what's cool about this is that, sure, I could drag the audio file in there and that would be fine. But what I actually wanna do is I might wanna actually pitch this audio file up and down. And, and there's a couple ways that we can do that in Logic. But one of the ways that I like doing it is to actually turn this into a sampler instrument that allow us to play it at different pitches. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'll go ahead and right click on the region itself. I'm gonna to go to where it says convert and I'm gonna say convert to new sampler track. And you can see it's gonna create zones from either regions themselves. So if I had more than one region, I can put them all in one sampler track or by the transients itself, that's fine. We'll call it the EXS instrument subsonic boom. Notice that it is gonna create an EXS instrument and that's important because that's Logic's built-in sampler and we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. That'll then mute the previous channel and create a new effect channel for us to work with. And so what this is gonna let us do is that it's gonna allow us to go into our EXS24 and if I click on the edit button right over here, don't worry too much about all these extra buttons, but if I click on the edit button, you can kind of see that this has now been created and it's actually just one sound right here at C negative two. Great. We can move this. So if I wanted to put this at middle C, for example, you can see that it lets us uh, work out uh, the sound. You can see it's actually pitched it all the way up. Let me actually set this key to C0. Right. And we can pitch this in either direction. We can actually click and drag this up an octave and we can click and drag it down an octave, just like we did with our regions in the track. So. Great, what that allows us to do is that it allows us to actually play this same sample in different keys. Great, and so that allows us to try out different types of drops with just using that one effect, which is really, really nice. So I'm gonna close that window out 
I'll hit save. I do want to make sure that I save that instrument. And I'll close that window out. And let's delete this region because we don't really need it. We're going to write in our own region. And let's try out some different transition options. Let me also make the cycle region just a little bit shorter, just four bars. And let's see what we get. Maybe a little bit lower. Maybe a little bit lower. Yeah, I think that really low one is the one that I want to go with. Since Logic was listening, I can just hit the capture recording button and you can see it's one created a track folder for us, but it's also placed that item right there. Let's hear that all together without the cycle region from the second half of this phrase and see what that's going to sound like. Great. So that's how we can start making transitional sounds from one section to the next using Apple Loops and the EXS24 sampler.